Hey everybody, this is Kevin again. I know it's been a while since I made my last video and uh, we're now in the year 2019. 2018 is over and done with. Um, there are quite a few topics, things are going on right now, a few topics that I wanted to cover in videos coming up. This one I'm going to do first because it was something that I saw last night. And I was like, I got to do a video about this, but there's other topics on my mind as well that I wanted to get out. <clears throat> so be, those will be coming up another time. This one right here uh, it <clears throat> has to do with the, the new IFB, uh, which I've covered in, in another video before this. But what that means is the new independent fundamental Baptist movement. Okay, the new IFB movement. And um, they've come out with a video, another video. Um, they do these from time to time with their heretical doctrines that they have. And this one's called A Dispensation of Heresy, Documentary Exposing Dispensational Theology. And uh, on this particular webpage, it's on Verity Baptist Church webpage, which, which is... Roger Jimenez, he's the pastor of that church in Sacramento, California. But the guy that really, now I'll show you in a minute a, a little clip of this, but uh, uh, the guy that's that actually is spearheading this particular film is uh, one of the, the people that basically uh, is part of this new IFB movement. But... Um, First of all, this guy right here, Stephen L. Anderson of uh, Word, uh, Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. He's the guy that really started this whole thing. He's kind of the, what they might call the Pope of this movement, of this uh, new international, uh, I mean, <laughs> new independent fundamental Baptist uh, movement, okay? And what they're doing is they're rejecting the doctrines of independent fundamental Baptist churches of old, uh, like the type that I have gone to. Um, they were rejecting a lot of the doctrines. They've kept some of them, uh, but that they were also changing others. And this is the man who did it. And so what he's doing is then he church plants. He plants churches with people who are part of his congregation that he raises up to be pastors. And he places them in other, other parts of the country uh, to, to continue this movement, okay? Um, so, uh, at the end of this particular movie, they, they run some credits, right? And so, uh, some of the people, I'm going to zoom in right here. These are, uh, these are the people in the cast, whether they wanted to be there or not, and probably they didn't want to that they consider to be heretics that they, that they have video of in this film. Charles Lawson is the, at the top heretic. Number one, Gene Kim heretic. Number two, Sam Gipp her heretic. Number three, Brian Denlinger heretic. Number four, Robert Breaker heretic. Number five, John Hagee heretic. Number six, Peter S. Ruckman heretic. Number seven, John N. Darby heretic. Number eight, C. I. Schofield heretic. Number nine, and Clarence Larkin, heretic number 10. Okay, so what they try to do in this film is they try to pin down that dispensationalism began with John Darby. And I've heard this time and time again about John Darby in the 1800s and that nobody in the church ever believed in dispensationalism or in a pre-trib rapture until John Darby came along. And then C.I. Schofield, okay, and before them, uh, nobody believed that. Well, that's absolutely false, for one thing. Okay, but another thing is that makes me angry is that they would say that Charles Lawson, who I consider to be uh, one of the most uh, greatest of the pastors around at this time, they consider him heretic number one. And then Gene Kim, Gene, Pastor Gene Kim, uh, he's a very good pastor, and I follow his videos, and I saw he had a response to this video. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Sam Gipp. I don't know much about Sam Gipp much, but... And then uh, Brian Dillinger, 
Um, I follow his channel. Uh, some things I agree with him on, some things I don't. Uh, Robert Breaker is a very good um, Bible teacher and uh, evangelist, and I think that uh, his, his videos are really well done. Um, but all of these people, and then Peter Ruckman, he's, he's not even around anymore, but, uh, you know, <laughs> he goes way back. And so they're basically just throwing all these guys under the bus saying they're all heretics. Okay. So, all right. Hmm. Well, let's see. All right. So I'm going to show you just a little clip of the, at the beginning of this. Okay. Actually, let me go back. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Evangelist Bruce Mejia from Faith Ward Baptist Church in Amani, California. The film you're about to watch is a documentary exposing the heresy of dispensationalism. Faith Ward Baptist Church has teamed up with Verity Baptist Church in Sacramento, California to expose this heresy, but also to educate Christians regarding this dangerous doctrine that has permeated many churches. Feel free to share this video with family and friends. Subscribe to the channel for future films. God bless and hope you enjoy. Okay, so you see Bruce Magia. He's the guy that just did the intro. He's kind of the one that spearheaded this particular video. And then also Roger Jimenez helps out with it as well. And they have clips of other, obviously of Steven Anderson and others in here. But uh, but that's just kind of like how it begins. Um, it's really a bunch of nonsense if you, if you watch it. <clears throat> um, now, in the middle of all this being released, it just got released this week. And at the same time, earlier this week, about the same time, we had uh, one of the <laughs> one of the guys that one of the young guys that's a pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas, who was ordained by Stephen Anderson and used to be in his church and everything. So his name is Donnie Romero, and so he ends up resigning. Okay. Uh, just a few days ago, he resigned um, because he got caught uh, doing stuff with prostitutes and smoking marijuana and gambling. And so he's not, you know, so basically Stephen Anderson said, you're not fit to be a pastor. You've got to resign. I'm going to show you just a little clip of that that service they had. Hours, Brother Edelman's going to be there with me. If anybody Let me go back wants a little to bit. just come, let's wisdom, see. Lord, prayer. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house tonight, Lord. Thank you for this church and thank you for the people that are here, Lord. I just pray that everything that's said and done tonight would honor and glorify you, Lord. Give us wisdom, Lord, and please just fill us with your Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this, um, some of you might be wondering why I'm here, uh, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. But I'm just uh, here as a friend to help out, and I'm going to be uh, preaching, God willing, on Sunday morning as well. But um, Pastor Romero has an announcement to make, and then uh, we'll talk further. I'm just going to read this. I just want to let you guys know that I'm stepping down as the pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church. I haven't been ruling my house well. I've been a terrible husband and father. I'm the one at fault in this situation, my wife and my kids, they're not to blame. I love Steadfast Baptist Church. I love my family. This is the best decision is for, our, for my family in this church to make. We plan on staying here as members of, our, of this church. I'm very sorry for the hurt this may cause people, the discouragement. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I love you guys. 
I wish I wouldn't let it get to this point. I love, thank you, Pastor Anderson, for coming to help us, help my family, and help my wife and I. And uh, I love you guys. All right, so like I said, I'm here to help, and um, I'm, I'm here to preach and to, to fill the pulpit, but obviously a new pastor is needed, and um, it's, that's very important that uh, since Pastor Romero is stepping down, that someone else step in to take care of that. He is disqualified from being a pastor, um, and so we need someone else to be the pastor going forward, and... Um, you know, first of all, I just, I wrote down myself, I'm going to be here for the next several days, and I want to be available to help people, so I wrote down my phone number right here, I'm just going to set this up here, so that anybody can, you know, get my phone number. Okay, so, <clears throat> as you can see there, you know, Donnie Romero resigned as pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church, and of course, who's there? Steven Anderson, <laughs> taking over, and sort of taking control and saying he's kind of in control of the situation maybe of trying to get them another pastor. It's not really his business to do that, but he's kind of placed himself in that position, it seems. And even though he had in the past had said in messages before and his sermons before that when he, you know, when he sends forth someone and ordains them that uh, they're on their own and he doesn't, he won't have any kind of dealings with, you know, telling them how to run their church or anything. And yet he comes here and he tells Donnie Romero, yeah, you got to step down. And then he's kind of like taking control here. Uh, instead of the deacons of the church doing that or any of the uh, con uh, people in the congregation of that church. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, interesting thing about this new IFB movement. Uh, and then in this video here, you know, of course, he's talking about he, he, hey everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. So he's talking about this whole situation too, of Romero stepping down and everything. I've got some really bad news. Unfortunately, Pastor Donnie Romero has stepped down as pastor of Steadfast Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, there was a big meeting about it on Wednesday night at church. He basically, at the beginning of the service, announced that he was stepping down and then... I helped out for the rest of the service by fielding questions and, you know, giving everybody a chance to, to say their piece. And, and we answered the questions. We talked about the way forward. Let me go a little bit further forward here. Let's see. And we don't want to go into that. And, and, and not only that, but I want to give people a chance to process this. It, you know, I think it was just enough of a bombshell on Wednesday night to just know that, that he's stepping down, that he's disqualified himself, whatever. But in this video, I do want to mention what the specific sins were without going into any details, just because of the fact that I think it's important to be transparent. It's the right thing to do, even if it hurts people's feelings, even if people are offended. And we think about those things. Obviously, we care about people's feelings, and we love people, and we want to see people restored, and we want to help people. But at the same time, when you're in a public position of trust, like being a pastor, and you commit major sins, then you know it's it just isn't right to sweep it under the rug. And so these things have to be confronted head on. Having integrity is important. Doing the right thing matters. Now, this isn't just a small thing where. Uh, obviously, everybody's human. Nobody's perfect. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to do wrong. Even pastors are human. But when it crosses the line to where these are grievous sins that would get someone kicked out of their church, that would get someone obviously removed from their position as pastor, these things need to be confronted head on. And so I'm just going to mention you know, what the sins were without going into detail. Basically, the the major sin involved was being with prostitutes. And then there were also marijuana and gambling that were also discovered. So, anyway, again, Steadfast Baptist Church, the people there, they're great people, they're godly Christians. Okay, so he tells you there what the sins were that 
Donnie Romero had to step down for, okay? <clears throat> okay, then, <laughs> not long after that, he's got another message out, and he's refuting what another guy that's over in the Steadfast Baptist Church, uh, Satellite Church over in Jacksonville has to say, name, his name is Adam Fannin. He's also part of this new IFB. But look what... The congregation is not just split. It's but look what, what, he's, what Adam Fannin is saying. And then look what, um, look what Stephen Anderson says about him. More of a 90% to 10% split. Over 75%, probably upwards of 90% of the people in the church have said if we submit to Jonathan Shelley as pastor, then they will not return to Steadfast Jacksonville. Now that is a bold-faced lie, and anyone who's actually out there in Jacksonville knows that that's a bold-faced lie, that supposedly 90% or upwards of 90% of the people out there will just refuse to come back if Jonathan Shelley's the pastor. Take a look at this video that some of the people out there have put up. We here at Steadfast Jacksonville want to make ourselves very clear. We support Pastor Jonathan Shelley. We are a satellite church. Pastor Jonathan Shelley is the one that we support. We are not interested in going to war with Fort Worth. We want to be in unity with Steadfast. Okay, so he continues on. He plays more clips from Adam Fannin. And Adam, and then he refutes Adam Fan and calls him a liar. <laughs> There's just so much trouble going on in this this new IFB movement. It really is, it's just really crazy stuff. And um, boy, I'm glad I'm not in that. But <clears throat> um, now, of course, another thing is that Stephen Anderson's trying to push this guy that lives in Houston now, that's already a pastor. This guy Jonathan Shelley to be the new pastor there at Steadfast not really giving the people of that church any kind of option, really, but just say, hey, accept him, you know. Um, okay, so in response to this, uh, this film about dispensation, uh, the dispensation of heresy, okay, so far there has been responses from uh, Pastor Gene Kim and from Robert Breaker. I'm going to play just a little bit of what they said. This is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So I have been under attack recently, and there's a bunch of pastors out there. Uh, they're not actually legitimately pastors. There's some weird cultic fringe, and some of you know how dangerous cults can be, like the Jim Jones cult, for example. Uh, they drank the Kool-Aid and many died. There have been many cults throughout current events, and today where members and people lost their lives and they can be very dangerous like for example muslim radicals blowing other people up so strange fringes or cults can be very dangerous including christian church groups so unfortunately there have been a group of cult pastors who have attacked yours truly for teaching as you may know what i believe in very strongly the king james bible and dispensationalism so I stand for King James Bible-believing dispensationalism, as you all may know. A lot of you have been changed by those doctrines, and praise the Lord for that, and has helped your life immensely in filtering out wrong doctrines. Now, obviously, Satan does not want truth to continue. So you don't think that Satan will try to attack King James Bible-believing dispensationalism if that has been the truth that opened many people's eyes? So, of course, he's going to attack, right? So, obviously, there have been groups online that have been attacking me. And some of them are actually pastors of churches, which is very dangerous. So, I feel very bad for the people over there. Now, the thing is, is that because I have stood for King James Bible-believing dispensationalism, some of them took advantage online because the Internet is their only haven and power where they can deceive people by using professional graphic arts design and very beautiful pictures and then trying to attack people's lives. So they try to dig up dirt on Bible-believing dispensationalists, try to dig up dirt in their lives, try to dig up dirt on Bible-believing preachers. If they dug up my life, they would try to expose all of that too. 
What those people want to do is that they want to try to scare people, try to prove that I'm a heretic. Bible-believing preachers are heretics for teaching dispensationalism just because they dig up dirt on people's lives. But Okay, that's just a uh, little clip of this video. It's a pretty long video. <clears throat> but Pastor Gene Kim's a good guy. I've been watching his... Uh, his sermons and his studies, he's very um, well grounded in the scriptures. Um, and here's a, um, a little clip also from Robert Breaker from the other night, uh, from what he had to say in response to this. Baby basket curling. We went to Lowe's today and we're just having some fun with the kids. <laughs> So I posted that video. If you haven't seen it, you ought to see that. That's kind of fun. Um, so let me say hello to everybody. And again, man, I don't know how I can read all of these comments. They're just moving so fast. But I've got some emails lately. Someone has, has come out, and this is what I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about dispensational theology, dispensational truth, and talk about apostasy, the, the last days that we end in, uh, live in and the last days that we are in today. Um, it's hard for me to think right now. It's been a very long day, and I've been so so busy. But I was trying to set aside Thursday as, as a day to do this. We may do it every Thursday, maybe every other Thursday, but I'd like to, to do something like this. But I've been getting some emails from people that say, Hey, Brother Breaker, have you seen this video that just came out? And I'm like, I No, no. But when they told me which one it was, I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know which one you're talking about. There's a video that's come out, and let me see if I can share the screen here. Nope, I don't even know how to do that. I can share a screen when I'm a guest, but when I'm the moderator, I can't figure that out. So anyway, if you go to YouTube, um, you can look this video up if you desire. Uh, I think it would be a complete waste of time. At least that's what people have told me that have watched the video. And I've watched the video last night with my wife. It's an hour, a little over an hour and a half, and it's called Dispensation of Heresy. And if you want to look this up, look it up in YouTube called Dispensation of Heresy. It's a video in which I'm a cast member. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that I was a cast member in this video, but we watched it. At the very end, it said cast, and it said I was in this video as one of the cast. Now, don't they have to have permission for you to be a cast in, in their video or something? I don't know. But anyway, uh, this video is a video against dispensations. Okay, so let me explain how I knew this video was coming out. And before I do, let me tell you that this dispensational uh, video is not a video teaching dispensations. It's against the teaching of dispensations. So they say teaching dispensations is heresy. That's what they believe. Uh, these same people that put out this video, and again, I don't want to talk about the people. I'd rather deal with the issue that they bring up. Before that, they put out two other videos. The first video they put out was Marching to Zion. And in that video, they say, God's done with the Jews, there's no such thing as Jews, and so forget it, there's no Jew. And that's like, well, so let's throw the book of Revelation out of the Bible, because it's all about God going back dealing with them, and they're in their temple and things like that. So that's really odd. Then they came out with another video, uh, if, if I remember correctly, I think it's called After the Tribulation. I'm not certain the name of that one. But they believe in what they call a, a pre-wrath rapture. Uh, and they don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture like I do. They believe the rapture comes either in the middle or at the end of the tri tribulation, which is kind of weird. And then they came out with this. They call it a documentary, Dispensation of Heresy. And I think that's an excellent name for that film because they're doing a lot of dispensation of heresy. And the word dispense means to put something forth. And they're putting forth a lot of heresy in their movie by saying there's no such thing as dispensations. And, and what's even funnier is, is they say in this film, there's no such thing as dispensations. And yet they title their film, The Dispensation of Heresy. So <laughs> do, do they believe in at least one? And the one they believe in is The Dispensation of Heresy. So it's quite an awful, awful film. And I've been getting really not that many. Okay, okay so <clears throat> it goes on for a lot longer, but... Um, a little bit further into it, um, Robert Breaker does show a book that he has <clears throat> that a man wrote, and it actually gives proof of of uh, other people bef way before John Darby that believed in uh, a pre-trib rapture, believed in dispensationalism. 
Okay, so that whole theory of John Darby creating dispensationalism is bogus. Okay, um, <clears throat> so basically right now what I'm going to show you, this is the page of, of that movement, that new IFB movement, okay? And, and that's basically what, what is the new IFB movement? You know, basically explains what they believe, okay? So here's the different doctrines right here, okay? I'm going to kind of go down through them. Um, first one is faith alone for salvation. Well, I agree with that one, okay? Once saved, always saved. I agree there too. Like I said, there's some things that they still kept that I agree with, okay? Uh, King James Bible only, I agree with that. Trinity, yeah, I agree with that. Soul winning, I agree with that. Hard preaching, yep, absolutely. Anti-worldliness, well, obviously, I agree with that. Anti-Calvinism, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, here we go. These last three I do not agree with. Anti-dispensationalism. The new IFB movement rejects dispensationalism. Salvation has always been by grace through faith and always will be. Here are some sermons proving dispensationalism to be a false doctrine. <laughs> Obviously, I don't agree with that belief. Okay. And that belief came from, I'm going to show you in a minute, it came directly from the mind of Stephen Anderson. Okay. Other people might have influenced him in that way, but he didn't get that from the independent Baptist churches. Okay. Anti Zionism. That's another one that I disagree with him on. A mo the modern day nation of Israel is a total fraud. The Bible teaches that saved people are God's chosen people and not the physical Jews. Here are some videos exposing Zionism and showing what the Bible really teaches. Well, I guess he's never read, I guess they've never read Romans chapter 11 which would dispute that completely. Okay. And modern day Israel is there for a reason. God put the Jews back in their na in their land for a reason. They're not just there by accident. Okay. So I completely reject this anti Zionism thing. Okay. And this, uh, replacement theology is basically what it is. All right. So then they got post trib pre wrath rapture. They call it both post trib pre wrath. The Bible teaches that the rapture will take place after the tribulation, but before God pours out his wrath upon the earth. The pre-tribulation rapture, which is commonly taught today, is not found in scripture. Here are some videos proving the post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture. And of course, that's spearheaded by none other than Stephen Anderson. And these other people just kind of followed along with him, as I said before. He's the one that's really the leader of this movement. Okay, now what I want to show you, though, is I want to show you, first of all, I'm going to go to this page right here. <clears throat> okay, so this web page right here is Regency Baptist Church. This is the church that basically um, Stephen Anderson went to before he broke out, broke away and created his own church. This is where his pastor was, his pastor, his church, um, whose name is uh, Stephen Nichols. Um, that's his family there, and that's Stephen Nichols, the older man there. That was Stephen Anderson's pastor, okay? And it's an independent Baptist church. Now, I'm going to show you now what their statement of faith is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right, this is their statement of faith. I'm just going to go through a few things. I'm going to just show you something. There's a lot of this. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just show you. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Dispensationalism. We believe that the scriptures interpreted in their natural literal sense reveal divinely determined dispensations or rules of life which define man's responsibilities in successive ages. These dispensations are not ways of salvation, but rather are divinely ordered stewardships by which God directs man according to his purpose. Three of these dispensations, the age of law, 
the age of the church, and the age of the kingdom are the subjects of detailed revelation in Scripture. And then it gives Scripture references, okay? There you go. His pastor, Stephen Anderson's pastor, believes in dispensationalism. Okay? Let's see. I think... Okay. Oops. We'll go to the next... Some more pages here. Um... Okay, these other things he still believes. Um, the eternal state. Creation. Okay. Okay, basically that's it. But the, I wanted to pe point out there that his pastor actually does believe. Oh, that was, no, there was another thing I wanted to show you. If I can find it. I'm looking. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, look at this. The second advent of Christ. We believe in that blessed hope, the personal imminent return of Christ, who will rapture his church prior to the seven-year tribulation period. At the end of the tribulation, Christ will personally and visibly return with his saints to establish his earthly messianic kingdom, which was promised to the nation of Israel. Did you hear that? He believes in a rapture of the church prior to the seven-year tribulation period. Okay, Pastor Nichols believes that. Where in the world did Stephen Anderson go wrong? Where did he change his view from what his pastor's view was? That's the real question here. Um, and with that, I'm just going to say, you know, basically... This whole, this movement, this new IFB movement is really dangerous. And like Pastor Kim said earlier, he said basically it's a cult. And I'm kind of believing that it really is um, because it's coming from one man. It's coming from Steven Anderson. And he's created this cult. This new IFB movement is a cult he has created. And yet he had a good um, background in a real independent fundamentalist uh, fundamental Baptist Church at you know Regency Baptist Church he had a good upbringing but he flipped around on some of the things like dispensationalism and and he went with anti-zionism and you know uh, a post-trib rapture and all this kind of stuff he he really went off in a different direction and even later on because he wasn't really ordained by this pastor he claimed that he was but this pastor nichols really never did ordain anderson anderson went off and did this on his own and so anderson of course says uh, that pastor nichols lied about that every time that anderson comes on he says that other people lie he never lies only them he's always right they lied <laughs> i don't know I, I i just think it's a, it's a dangerous movement and people need to start uh, stay as far away from those kind of churches as they can. Find a good independent Baptist church, not this kind that that rejects dispensationalism and rejects, uh, you know, Israel having a part. You know, basically being put back into their land again. Anybody that rejects that, you need to get away from them. So with that, I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna say bye for now because it's been kind of a long one. But uh, the next videos. I'm going to have other topics that I want to cover. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you all.